Hey there, Commanders. A little bit of a late upload this week, um, and that was a deliberate choice on my part. Uh, I looked at this community goal and realized it was boring, and my Thursday was stacked. So I ended up having to table the video uh, that night, and that meant not releasing anything on Friday. So uh, here I am Saturday morning just kind of slapping this baby together because you're not missing anything. I'll just preface that on the front end. If you're busy and you want to go do something else, you can shut the video off right now. But if you want to know why this community goal is kind of bland, just stick around and I'll go ahead and slam this out real quick. There are no exotic modules on offer. We're not getting any special physical reward. Right here, blanket discount. And if you go down here to the other community goal, it's being offered in the same system. These are competing goals. Only one can win, and the benefit is only issued to the winner it's another blanket discount. In both cases, it's a 10% reduction to the cost of mining modules, uh, where the reduction will only apply to the community goal that wins. In this case, if you're working on Torval, it'll be the Pride of Bitterwood. And if you're working with cane mining, it's going to be Smithport. Both of these stations are in the Dulo system. Bitterwood is a mega ship that moves around, so I would imagine if you know, prior to, if Torval Mining wins, that Bitterwood will linger in the system and do its thing, and if they lose, then it will probably dip out um, probably a week after the community goal. We'll, we'll see what happens. Now, the problem I have in specific with this community goal is that the reward structure is bland, and the thing that it's asking you to go and get, it's three mining commodities, Galite, Bromeliad, and Samarium. These are not particularly rare as mining commodities go, but that means they're also not particularly valuable. Here's the spreadsheet of uh, current known market rates at the Pride of Bitterwood, which is one of the, the uh, stations involved. And you'll see that Samarium and Galite are highlighted as having abnormally high sell prices. So if you're selling to the station, you can get, a, you know, compared to galactic average, a pretty good take. But you'll note the bromeliite, which is the other uh, mineral that they're after, it is only highlighted in blue. And what that means is that its take rate isn't actually that good. That means there's other places in the bubble that are buying bromeliite for more than what the community goal is currently taking it for. And you can actually go and you can see where that's happening. If I select bromeliite, I can see maximum sell prices in the galaxy. And you'll note there are a bunch of fleet carriers for whatever reason offering to buy this material for 300,000 credits for some reason that I don't know. Um, and that's if you want to sell to a station. Now, if you want to buy from a station, you go to the Exports tab here. And you can buy from a fleet carrier for roughly the same price. In fact, it's all fleet carriers. And uh, it looks like they're scattered all over the place. Um, here's Smithport. We can check the uh, take rates for Smithport real quick and compare them to the Pride of Bitterwood. I imagine the prices are going to be really similar, though. I, I can't imagine that they're uh, they're going to be very different. Um, but they do have a much a much greater breadth of operations in their market, and it looks like 23, 60, 51. It looks like they're pretty close to uh, yeah, yeah. Smithport isn't offering anything higher, anything better price-wise, which makes sense. Um, now, here's the problem with these prices in general. If you're trying to make money in a community goal, there are more productive things that you can hunt for. Um, these fleet carriers, that's weird. I want to—I—I I, I don't know if any of you guys have a fleet carrier that's selling this stuff, but I would wonder how you're able to get away with prices that high because that, that blows the galactic average out of the water. Now, I'll go over here and hit up uh, mining tools. The fleet carriers are beating the current best price for painite and low temperature diamonds right now, which is odd because painite and low temperature diamonds have been the kings of the mining meta for more than a year now. If you're trying to generate credits to buy your next ship and you want to do it mining, these are the two best ways to do it. Uh, and you'll note that, uh, let's see, let me get painite back up here and make sure I'm looking at the right price rate. Painite is the undisputed king. Uh, its current take from the NPC markets, these are not fleet carriers, these are stations. 238,288 per ton with a demand of 7,939. And this is a record that's 20 hours old. Its closest hotspot, if you wanted to sell to this station and just do direct mining without a fleet carrier, HR 8461, which you can see up here, um, actually has a painite hotspot in 
planet six ring A. So you, you do still need to have a detailed surface scanner to be able to find that specific hotspot, but, but this is an assurance that it is there. Um, I recommend if you're gonna do this that you have or work with a fleet carrier because it lets you bank up a large amount of materials, but there are places where the loop isn't too bad. Um, if, you, if you don't mind taking a hit to a maximum take rate, Petted Orbital uh, is taking 193,650, but you do have to have a medium pad ship in order to dock there. Uh, and if you need a large pad ship, the uh, next most favorable distance is Piercy Gateway. It's 86 light year, 89, well, that's more like 87 light years from the nearest hotspot. It's taking 185,000. Um, it's a little bit out of the way. It's not too bad. And that's just if you want to do NPC mining. Now, man, I wonder what's going on here that these fleet carriers are able to take prices this high, because I don't think they're going to be recovering them from the community goal directly. I mean, unless we're doing some kind of a completionist thing. Um, and I don't even know if these fleet carriers are dockable. Let me, uh, now let's, let's see. Maybe it will tell us. I have never actually tried to get into fleet carriers on Anara very much. So this will be a new experience for me. Um, security level medium, no permit. Well, of course, no permit. There have been 36 plus player ships based on in our commander profile updates. So a lot of players are coming in and out of here. Um, Alliance Office of Statistics. This is the uh, this is the station information. So there's been a lot of player ships coming into this system. This fleet carrier is not telling us. Oh, yep, yeah, here we go. Docking status all, but the last update on docking status was 154 days ago. Uh, and it has a 25% service tariff, which is pretty steep. I don't know. If you guys are buying or selling commodities from fleet carriers, let us know in the comments um, how that's going. Because there's a lot of ways that you can pull shenanigans with fleet carriers, and I'm a little nervous to uh, encourage people to go straight to them. Because I don't know if that's a good deal or not, and with prices that high, I'm a little skeptical as to what's going on here. Because someone's, if they're, yeah, I I don't know what's going on there. So let me know in the comments if you know, because I'm kind of out on my ass on this one. <laughs> um, as for participation directly in the community goal, I can't recommend it. If you buy commodities at 300,000 tons from a fleet carrier and then try to sell them here, you're going to take a loss. So, I don't know, maybe these guys are trying to scalp the markets, or maybe there's something else taking place that I am not seeing. So, that's all I got for today. I will catch you guys later.